Howdy once more, it's Mr. Pete, and I haven't made a video in a long, long time uh, entitled How Things Work. I've done a whole bunch of them, and there's a playlist. People lost interest, and I didn't have any ideas, so I haven't done one in a long time. So I'm going to do one now on the lens effect. I hope that some people watch this and tell other people about it. But most people that watch my channel aren't interested in science at all. This is really a scientific experiment with magnetism demonstrating the lens law. And I've talked a lot about this in the past. In fact, I have several videos on that. Look them up if you want. If I'll remember, I'll put it uh, at the end, uh, the, the video that you might want to watch. And the effect is a, is a magnetic effect between uh, very strong magnets, neodymium magnets, and materials that are not magnetic, such as copper, brass, and aluminum. So I've got two experiments provided uh, that I prepared for you. The first one's very, very simple. The other one I struggled with. I spent eight hours on it. That's why, and I, I gave up three times. It was just so difficult to, to develop this little model, and they're very, very crude. And I'm ashamed of it, but I'm going to show it anyway because I got so doggone much time involved. I used to really enjoy amusement parks and carnivals when I was a kid. No longer do I care two hoots about any of this. By the way, I love Pete Rondeau's channel, and he inspired me indirectly to, to show this because he deals in carnival rides, and he's a very smart man, and I really like him. I haven't met him. But the first thing I'm going to show you is how they stop a roller coaster ride and probably many other uh uh, rides or uses for this. I'm going to show you the simplest way. Now, when I was a kid and I would go to R Riverview, Riverview Park in Chicago with my girlfriend, we would ride the roller coasters and, and the, the biggest one they had was called the Bobs. It's all long, long gone and they put up a subway. Really nice and a Cracker Barrel too, I think. But anyway, I do recall that at the end of the ride, you're still coming in pretty fast, although you're coasting. But at some point, they, uh, they put a brake on. Well, the brake, I think, squeezed the wheels. Kind of like they do in a hump yard in a railroad uh, classification yard. Uh, when they retard, they call them retarders, uh, I guess. But the whole idea here, this is a 25-pound chunk of copper. These are Hot Wheel cars that I borrowed from my grandson. Now when the ride is over, you don't want to crash. So without Henry's permission, I took one of the little cars and I took it apart, the little rivets there, and I put two small magnets, if I can find them. They look like this. There's two of them in there. And then I taped it. There's not very much clearance, but as you can see, it rolls all right. But watch what happens. It'll probably go off the track if I don't aim it right. And so this is how they stop the roller coaster. You see how it stops almost instantly? That's a pretty amazing phenomenon. As far as I'm concerned, I hope you have a scientific mind. All right, enough of that boring experiment. Perhaps some of you would do something like this at home and show your children or, or show your kids this if they are interested in science. Now comes the hard one. Okay, this experiment cost me $20 and almost eight hours of discouragement, anger, frustration, and bitterness. But this is a model or a very crude representation of a carnival ride called the Tower of Terror. There's a lot of different names for it. They usually are about 90 feet tall and it's a free fall. My grandson went on one someplace and he said that if they had made it 10 foot higher, they would uh, have had to had a red light on it for airplanes. So the idea here is that this could be a very dangerous, dangerous ride, as a lot of our carnival rides are, but to make it fail safe. And what happens here is that, visualize this ring down here. 
that they would load that up with people. There's seats on there, and I'll put some pictures here to show you if you've never seen one of these. They're usually at amusement parks. They're too big to set up, I think, in uh, portable carnivals of travel. Anyway, you got 20 people sitting there paying $9 each, and they slowly raise it up. And when it gets clear up to the top, you got a free fall. Well, how are you going to stop that before it hits the bottom? Because I don't believe that there's cables on here or anything like this. I, this is the way I had to come up with it. It took me a lot of time and effort to come up with it. So here we have a tube of copper wrapped with copper, so it's quite thick. This is, of course, plastic. I had to buy a whole length of, of conduit for that. And this rod here, this dowel, is attached to a very large magnet. You've seen it in other videos. It's about one inch in diameter. It's just incredibly powerful. So the idea is they raise this to scare the heck out of you, and then you drop, and then it, slow, it stops slowly at the bottom. And the way they do that is with this lens effect, because it doesn't matter if the generators quit, or the power goes off, or if a hose and the hydraulic line would break or or a cable or a rope or anything like that. So it's totally fail safe. Now I've talked that to death, haven't I? But this was so fussy to make. This had to be uh, non-magnetic. And even the, the, the brass ring at the bottom, which is the last, I almost quit again five minutes ago because I took the time to make a steel wire, just a representation and that string but I can't use steel. The magnet attracted it, so I had to go with the brass, and oh my gosh, the trials and tribulations that Mr. Pete went through. Okay, let's see if I can make it work. So I'm going to raise it all the way up, which is two feet, and there's girls screaming, and that's how high it goes. Now watch initially how fast it drops. And then it slows down, and there was probably even more magnets or spring. I don't know what would be at the bottom. This is just a general idea here that I came up with to demonstrate the principle of the Lenz Law with the Tower of Terror. And they're probably not all built that way, and I think a lot of them are built in Italy or in Europe. They have some great engineers over there. Let's do it one more time. Well, it was a nice short video, although it took me a long time to make it. And one thing I wanted to say, my brother was very much like this, even more so than what I am. He had to know how something worked. And he would spend tremendous effort on it, make telephone calls, spend a lot of money to find out how things worked or whatever the, the subject was. And one of the things that he would often say is, I gots to know. I gots to know. Because he could not rest until he knew the answer to the problem. And not too many people are like that, I realize. I thought everybody was, but, but they aren't. They don't care as long as they got their phone. So, but... In some ways, I got to know too, and I believe he got that line out of a movie. A lot of our lives uh, and our ideas uh, revolved around the movies. Now, uh, at the end here, there's just a couple pictures of one of those towers of terror. You can look them up on the uh, Google or something if you care. Thanks for watching, and remember, I got almost 2,000 videos. And there's a playlist for what makes it work, too. And there were some pretty popular videos years ago. They're pretty well dead right now. Again, thanks for watching. See you next time.